this is my old Game Boy. It's had a hard life. It's been with me for a very long time. It's been passed around. It made its way back to me a few years back. Um, long story short, it stood around doing nothing for a very long time on a shelf. And this year, obviously Corona gets in the way of things, this year I decided I would drag it out of retirement and use it again. Didn't think it would cost me quite as much as I spent. The screen on these is hideous. Truly, truly hideous. I don't know if you can even see that. I'm struggling to see it. At the best I can get this screen. I'm hoping you can see this. If you can, I'll give it a tweak. That way it blurs out. If I come this way I can get a contrast and then it blurs out to black. There's a very, very sharp area in the middle that I can just about get right. And let's see whether we can play this thing. Beautiful, isn't it? So that is uh, probably what you're going to get if you dig your old Game Boy out of the loft and fire it up. Uh, long story short, I'm not trying to win this. Um, a long story short, uh, the screens degrade over time. This one actually doesn't have any of the vertical lines that seem to make an appearance because the solder does something nasty at the bottom of the screen. If you do have a solder issue and you do want to keep this horrible green thing on your screen, then uh, you can sometimes fix it. Me personally, I think the way forward is an IPS. So we're going to stop this now. And we're going to tear this old girl apart. So starting off with tri wings. One, two, three, four. When you whip your batteries out, there are two hidden underneath. I'm not really bothered about anything here. Come on, get out. I've got nails longer than. Oh, come on, and I can't get it out. And two more inside. Obviously, I haven't done that one already, and I've already done that one. So, one, two, three, four, five, five, and six. Once you've undone them, I think, once you've undone them, there are a couple of things you need to do to this case in order to. Oh, come on, get in there. In order to fit an IPS screen to it. There we go. So first off, you need to remove this. That's my speaker not connected because this is a demo version. Now, when you buy an IPS screen, it comes with, well, yeah, it does. It comes with a new board. So basically, you end up with a whole new board for your buttons, which is a good time to change your buttons if you're going to do them, and you have to do a slight modification to the case. Every screw on this board, if you can see a screw, take it out. Um, once they're all out, the board will just fall out. If it doesn't, it's probably bonded slightly to the screen over time, because of some of the gunk they used to stick things down. But literally, if there are no screws in the board, this will lift out. I don't want to do that, all the buttons will fly everywhere. So just wedge her out of there. And we're out. Keep them in, in place just for the hell of it. Right. Um, obviously not modified. So we would be doing it with that one. So either you want to take that off the cutters or dremel it back, whichever you feel best with. You take that, that one also off with a dremel or cutter, so that also flat with the surface. And up at the top here you have three pins, three lined pegs. The left hand one has to go, so you need to cut this one out, and that has to be flush with the case. Now, seeing as I'll never use this case, I'll just modify that now and show you what you need to do. So, the pair of cutters, get rid of this, get rid of this, and get rid of this. And then trim it back so it is as flush as you can get it. It doesn't have to be totally exact, just close. If you're doing a clear case, put more effort in than I just did. But in general stakes, 
already with what's gone from there that's a good enough mud it's ready to go next so with that done let's go to the actual screen now, this is a retro 6 kit and the retro 6 kit comes with this nice plastic 3d print thing that gives you a nice shape and surround to fit things to you also have flat pins on the back if you bend them out to 90 degrees they will make your life a lot easier in a moment only the top ones not the bottom obviously make sure that your orientation is right and the kits together it's going to be that way around so that goes over and into the hole so this is the top on mine and the top on yours obviously the actual case surround fits nice and snug around the outside of it i think this is great makes it fit so easy there's a nozzle here like a glue nozzle that's giving your circuit board room to maneuver so if your kits come with everything in bits then take the screen and connect this little motherboard if the motherboards are not connected again it's a zero in portion it's in zero insertion force thing so flip it up cable in flip it down flip it up cable in flip it down stick this down with the bit of glue stuff you get and then when you come to your board same again put your cable in and um, obviously it goes blue side down into the main board you also notice now these two things that we've got sticking out will go through the holes in the board and they are if mine will go through a godsend just give me a short moment Put these glasses on. That's one. That's two. I went through the board, just bend them over, not massively, just bend them over enough to hold the screen in place. If you do that, it won't fall out. And if your screen doesn't fall out, life gets an awful lot easier when you come to putting it together. So however you do it, whatever you use. There we go. I've left it slightly loose, so there's play, but it's holding nicely. With that done, you need to get this one open fingernail underneath it turn it up to 90 degrees now from there we need to get this cable into there come on there we go when it's in close the gate that's that fitted now we can fit this to front of the case it's a new case because I'm changing the case pre-modded now again like flat flat and obviously that piece cut off right fold your cable around stick your speaker in bring your board down now when you come to put this back together, there are only three or four screws holding this down. You don't need as many as came out. The new board does not use all the screws. that screw it's a different one now I am cutting a thread here this is slightly different than the one I was using but it will do it's the same length there you go four Phillips screws all in place check your buttons feel good which they do and effectively that's the front done i'm going to do a quick tweak just to make sure everybody is as tight as i'd like them some tighter than others 
There we go. Great. Slide the four. We're good. Right. Now, let's put it back together. back casing. Ribbon cable is already pre-bent on mine, yours will be fighting you. Feel free to put a curve into it. Pushes in. So in theory, line it up. In theory, line it up. Get some weight behind it and shove it. And she goes in there. Double check it to be sure. I'm happy with that. Close it up, make sure nobody's binding, because obviously you don't want to break your screen at this point. And I'm happy with that. Yep, we're good. And then put your six screws in. I've made a mistake. This is where I realise I've got to pause now because, take that back out, because I have a further mod to do to this case. What I have to do here is put a new battery in. But as far as the screen is concerned, that is finished. So if I just tighten it up, I can demonstrate it. You see, if I just tighten it up, I can demonstrate it. There we go. Stick some batteries in here. And you can at least see the difference in the screen. That still feels a bit too loose for my liking. Tighten that one up. Turn it on. Okay, happy with that. Just stick a Game Boy flash card in there. And this is how it now looks. Nice flash. Get to Tetris. There we go. Tetris World. Now your button on the side, nothing's changed visually. It looks identical to, to a normal front. There is no changeover to it. It's identical. But now you've got dimness control down to nothing. Or take it all the way up. Brightness up to very bright. You can change your colours on this now by pressing it in. It has a, um, I don't know, it has a micro switch in there. So when you press it into that way into the case, your screen colours change. Gives you a few options so you can make things look how you like them. I personally prefer the white look. And start. So that's the difference between a normal screen and an IPS screen. I believe this is version 2, there's a version 3 now. The only difference is version 3 makes the buttons feel better, but I don't have a problem with these buttons. They feel identical to what it felt when I tested it out a few minutes ago with the originals. So some people apparently, they feel wrong. It doesn't appear to affect every Game Boy. But if you're buying one, get version 3 and you know you've got the latest version. As far as I'm aware, version 3 has no difference in screen it only has a difference in the way the buttons feel and that is how you modify the screen on a Game Boy. So, having it apart, we can do this easily. A battery pack, nice little thing. Two contacts on the top, the two contacts on the top are gonna to go against this spring and against this contact. So these are irrelevant, that's irrelevant. So I'm gonna ping that one out, I'm gonna ping these two out because they're not gonna do anything anymore. Which in theory means I need a pointing stick. 
just just pop that up. Number three is a bit awkward to get to. I need something sharp and pointy that isn't a knife. And that's three. That you got out. Now I need to put my case back together, which you've already seen me do once, but I'll do it again. No, I won't, because now I'm going to do the final part of without being an idiot. These three ridges in the bottom need to go. Um, I'm going to grind most of it out because I want it as flat as possible. But I'm also going to look at whether I can get away with this. Which I can. So I might be able to make this a little bit easier. Just for the grinding wheel when it cuts in there, it'll be a bit easier to get to. I could just... Oh, there you go. I could do that. Okay. Oh, this is working. Right, you don't need to see me do a grinding whip. I have a very cheap Dremel downstairs, but that will make this a lot flatter than I'm doing now. So, bear with me. When you next see this, it should either be done or I'll be sat here with the Dremel doing it. Okay, we're back. I've put the case back together. Um, a few bits of metal I don't need anymore, they're junk. We have a nice flat surface. We used, oh, we used an old cheap Maplin. It's junk. There's no torque, no power. It's nothing like a Dremel in terms of power, but as a little hobbycraft thing, it's ideal for little plastic jobs like this. Battery wise, your battery is going to go in and push against the spring. You have two contacts on the top. You'll see that on the top right of this one, I've bent it out slightly reason being it has to go into this gap now your battery is going to go there this is going to push up against it and in theory that is all we need get that wire out of the way I don't want to be trapping that in any way shape or form clear case with a hole already cut for it there we go and that gives us the most expensive Game Boy on the street Try and power it up and we'll see, see if everything's good. One Game Boy with an IPS screen, nice powerful battery in the back of there and USB-C charging. Gives us plenty of time to play it and now it's rechargeable. So that is all you need to do to make, the screen is disgusting, to make a nice Game Boy also has a glass screen on the front now instead of a plastic and that also replaces the one that I broke the other day which is what started this whole project off again and that's it job done <laughs>